Hello, I'm Dave Glass, and in 2017, David Wyatt and I launched a Kickstarter campaign to restore a pile of old Lloyd Hamilton silent comedy films and stick them on a DVD. The campaign was a success, and so the work began. And it was quite a lot of work. So I thought if you were one of the wonderful backers of this project and now own the DVD, you'd like a behind the scenes peek at some of the challenges that were faced when bringing these films back to life. And even if you weren't a backer, but you're a film geek like me, you may find it interesting too. You see, the way I look at it is, these are mini works of art, and therefore they deserve just as much love and attention as restoring a Rembrandt or a Renoir. Uh, after all, this is akin to an archaeological dig. And once these treasures are unearthed, they need to be displayed for their fans in the best possible light. So, what we were dealing with here, apart from his musical sneeze, were a pile of tatty old 16mm prints which were, we believe, issued in the 40s, maybe the 50s, in the UK. His musical sneeze, which was the odd one out, it was kindly supplied to us by the Danish Film Institute, and it was a scan of an incomplete um, but a fairly sort of decomposed 35mm print which was missing the main title so we had to remake that like this and all the intertitles were in Danish so we had to translate them back to American English and then tweak them again so that they resembled what they originally would have been like um, for example this card translates to here you see the mentioned collection of hunters, the most proficient that the shooters were in their time, president in Portugal for a whole month. Huh? Yeah, so it was a challenge at times. Um, it was made worse by the fact that it was old Danish and not new Danish. And as you know, there's nothing worse than an old Danish. Apart from this, the film required some minimal cleaning and stabilising and all of that. So the four main Hamilton Mermaid comedies, Dynamite, The Simp, April Fool and Moonshine, were from various sources. Uh, a couple were dupes from the Williams and Ivy Company, we believe others were from the Wallace Heaton Library. They all had remade titles, like so. Cruddy, huh? So they all had to be remade, and the main titles uh, were all rubbish and needed replacing too. With Dynamite, we had two different prints, uh, and they were different, um, but after analysis, decided that although they were identical shot by shot, one seemed much sharper than the other, so we used that. We ended up with two different digital scans of the better print, uh, and also two different scans of April Fool. Don't ask me why, but we did. And here's scan one, and here's a dollop of scan two and spot the difference. So we went with the better one of those and then after repeated viewing realized that certain scenes had been moved around. Yeah, let me explain. For example, Moonshine started with this scene of Hammond, B and Otto playing around and and then cuts to the opening battle scene with the, uh, the stork delivering Ham as a baby which was 20 years earlier. Huh? April Fool and the Simp also needed similar scene reordering. Um, and all we can surmise is that the redistributors of these films thought that the viewer would want to see Lloyd Hamilton, the star, as early as possible, so they cut a chunk out and stuck it on the front, uh, even if it meant missing up the continuity of the plot. All the prints required some gentle cleaning with some digital tools. Um, for example, here's a bit of April Fool with the original footage on the left, restored on the right. And here's a clip of Moonshine. Uh, this is the original. And this is after. And I was careful to make sure it still looked like an old film and not something that had been scrubbed to death and looked like something that had been shot last week. Um, other work included fixing some jumpy bits, technical term there. Uh, it's usually where there's some sprocket hole damage on the film, so like with April Fool, for example. And this homemade man corridor clip with Granny here. And then there's the stabilising. 
which is a laborious process, mainly because it has to be done scene by scene. You have to cut the whole film into individual scenes and then each scene is treated and it has to be done very carefully. Otherwise, this happens. Mmm, groovy. So that's an overview of the general restoration work applied to all these films. However, there was one particular film of the bunch that required so much work, it drove me to the cliff edge of insanity. Mmm, <laughs> so why was this a particular challenge, Dave? Well, Dave, let me explain. We had two different 16mm prints and a 9.5 Pathé version 2 to work from. David Wyatt's 16mm one was pretty sharp. Uh, wasn't complete, though. It didn't have the opening scenes, for example. And it had a bloody big scratch down the middle of most of it. Now, my print was a, an old Williams and Ivy dupey print. Not quite as sharp, but it was more complete. However, it was from very shaky pre-print material, uh, sort of constant earthquake going on. But the scenes in both 16mm prints were in a totally different order. Let me give you an example. Um, here's Ham being shooed away from the house. Then it goes to an earlier scene with the car crank thing in his hand. And he then creeps back in the house with cushions on his feet. And it doesn't make sense. It was as if both UK distributors had found a pile of film strips on the floor and just stuck them all together. Yeah, maybe they did. The 9.5 Pathé version of the simp is the one that most collectors have been familiar with until now. This is from the Looser Than Loose Hamilton collection that came out. But we had a high-res scan done of the 9.5 as well, because we found that there were a few shots that were only in the 9.5 and weren't in either of the 16mm prints. And the next problem was the titles. My 16mm had this as a main title. David Wyatt's didn't have any main title at all. And obviously the 9.5 main title wasn't anything to write home about. And the intertitles were an even bigger mess. They were all different to each other. For example, print 1 said this, whereas print 2 said this. And it was the same story for each of the intertitles for the whole print. Everything was different. Because presumably in the UK, kitty and puss mean two different things completely. Yeah. So, after the saga of the simp, um, once I'd got all of the films in their right order and all the title cards done, uh, I then sent them off one by one to super composer Meg Morley, who just did a fantastic job of putting up with me, uh, but also making great music to go with this stuff. Thank you, Meg, for exceeding every expectation I had. So it was a great challenge doing this restoration work, but it was a labour of love, and it was great to get these films looking as the best they possibly could be, even though it was quite brain-mangling at times. So thank you once again if you were one of the Kickstarter backers that helped us complete this project. Couldn't have done it without you. Thank you for that. And hopefully you were pleased and enjoyed the results too. And hopefully in the not-too-distant future we'll be back with another one. Thank you. Toodly pip. <laughs>